Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Two-Headed Wolf Gaming Channel as we're starting a brand new campaign in front of Britannia. I am going to start this campaign before bringing the end game analysis for the last campaign. The reason why is it takes time to put those videos together, at least with my level of experience and editing takes a bit more than usual and I have to put the images together and there were certain ideas that I wrote down throughout the campaign and when I went back to check on them I realized that they weren't really functioning the way I wanted to so I didn't have a whole lot of time to play and draw the final conclusions so it might take a few more days I'm thinking that by the end of the week I'll be able to put it together as I do have uh, an extra free day so during that day I think I will sit down and get it done but until then I decided you know what many of you came to this channel because you wanted to see Total War Thrones of Britannia and I've been a big fan of it as well and there was one idea that was given by a subscriber a while back uh, I don't really remember his name at this point like I tried to look up the, the comment and the idea and the only mention of him I could find is replying to one of the subscribers, to Igor, which, which, with which I had many chats about Thrones of Britannia and the campaign and everything else. Uh, but I'll just say that the subscriber's name was TP, but uh, I don't know if it was short for something or uh, if he had an entire name, but I just shortened it to TP. But he said that the way he likes to do a campaign, the way he works with economy, is that he plays with farming, high taxes, and tem and uh, churches, right? So basically, what do you do? You in you add churches to a settlement in order to to have good public order, and you keep your taxes high. So I wanted to try that during a campaign, and I felt like probably. Some of the best, one of the best uh, factions that we could do that with would be Mirs. We will do our utmost. The reason why I would like to do Mirs is because first of all I would like a faction that is fairly small. I don't want to play, that's why I don't want to play as West CX. West CX is pretty big, they have plenty of vassals around which will become well, one of those campaigns that is slightly more challenging because they can turn on you and I thought like they have good like a good swordsman as you can see strong armored swords spear infantry impress impressive late game cavalry and I feel like this could be good I'm not sure about the distribution of wealth I don't know how it has been rework I think Mears has been the first faction that I've played in a Total War game in the front of Britannia uh, and I think this is because Mirs appeared in some of the other games as well in the expansion for uh, Total War Attila for example. I think that's why I picked Mirs the first time I played it and it might have been very different at the time. Then we have here, Burgle, taxes are needed to support the army but whether you are at war or peace will change how the people feel. So maybe this will work against us, but I will try to see what happens. Feared, part-time soldiers pledged to leave their farms for military service each year can recruit levy units based on the number of owned settlements. And thus, the, the more we increase our territory, the more troops we will be able to recruit, at least levy units, not professional armies. And plus 50% to the commander's aura, which will help us in battles. Also with the battle movement, which helps us flank. So, what are we going to do? I'm going to go hard on politics. I'm going to stay very hard on the other two. And as far as objectives goes, I think Long Kingdom victory will be one of them, but at the same time, I am going to go for something like short and probably long pain victory depending on how these places, uh, how these uh, buildings are placed because I would like to to have a experience a slightly longer campaign 
where we see I, I guess the challenge will be how far can we push the people until we we can have them at high taxes and have them be happy that is the challenge right early on it's going to be difficult medium game we're gonna start to balance it out as we expand faster and faster we'll have to keep our armies in place until we have our churches up late game that that's where the the real uh, the challenge is not there anymore right late game we will have enough research to stabilize the region and tax it and i think we'll be fine so we'll have to see how this goes okay well i think i've talked enough that's everything i want to say i am going to read the faction information once the greatest anglo-saxon kingdom in britannia mears has fallen on hard times the glory days of, uh, of Offa and Penda are long gone, and the Vikings have annexed much of Mears' eastern territory, while the Welsh threaten from the west. Mears' recent rulers have been ac accused both of hiding behind the West Sea skirts and of using Mears' dwindling riches to appease the Vikings. Keowulf walks a difficult path, but pride still burns in his people's hearts. I'm very excited, definitely we will have to fight with Gwynedd and there will be East CX in here and West CX right, uh, no East Angla and West CX in here I think here to the north we also have one of the factions at Klut, right? They are neighboring us, it's going to be a challenge I'll keep my mouth shut for now a century ago, we held the reins of power. Other kingdoms bowed to our rule. Then came the Vikings. Their army divided us, and foreign kings ruled. We bent the knee for a time, but the great army has now been defeated, and our time has come again. West Saxa may claim to rule England, but it will not rule us. A great king can lead us back to glory and make our throne Britannia's greatest. These are uncertain times. You will need to stay strong and be aware of those who would take advantage of England's divisions. The Welsh, West Saxa, and the Great Army will ruthlessly exploit any weakness. Myersa's future is in your hands now. Prove you are worthy to hold the reins of power and unite Britannia under your banner. One of your armies is garrisoned in your capital, ready to defend it on your order. Your other army is poised to attack the rebels in the north. Eliminate the rebels, then turn your attention to your neighbors. So West Saxe, Saxe, and my ears? <laughs> Man, I've been reading them, I've been saying them wrong. Like, I knew that I might, but... Myerse? Myerse and West Sax. Okay, I guess I'll be calling it like that now. Let's see. So as far as bonuses, Myerse doesn't get a whole lot. They get 50% Commander's Aura and Battle Movement, and that's all. What do we need in order to expand our territory? Huntinshire? Hamptonshire is from West Sax. Either through ownership or vassals. Middle Sax. This is from East Angla. North Mears. Okay, at least this is under slightly smaller faction and Gwynedd. So we're going to have to fight three 
three great factions or stronger faction or main factions in order to take them okay got it well let's see what else do we have we have food we have Borgal, peace. The people expect taxes to be lower when there are no threats to the kingdom. The Borgal level can be changed by adjusting the tax level in the economy skill. Public order effect change if you are at peace, have a distant war, or have a war against an adjacent faction. New effects are applied at the start. Oh yeah, this mechanic will be very bad for us. So we are at peace. Freed cap reduced by 50% and minus 1 to influence, freed cap increased by 50% and minus 50 construction cost for garrisons. Huh. Interesting. And this is influence, let's see, by this? Oh, it doesn't show it now. Okay, so I feel like we'll have to stabilize these regions for a bit, like we'll have to work with it. The wrong allegiance, public order, oh, by hundreds of percentages. If this increases to 300 percentage, wrong, uh, being in the wrong faction, then we definitely need to get this one, cultural osmosis, and for that we need to build a market hall, upgrade within the market hall. Okay, that is good because I think Sester here, the caster, has the ability to grow. Okay. What else is this? Fiat 7. Your armies contain just the right number of levy units to absorb the enemy's arrows. <laughs> Can recruit levy units based on the number of owned settlements. Okay, one public order, minus one to unit replenishment for all levy units in the recruitment pool, minus one turn to unit replenishment for all retinue in the recruitment pool, and plus 10% income from farms. Okay, this will be very interesting, and I think if we're going to research on this side, on the agriculture side, which we need a granary for. Yeah, there's not really a building requirement here. The water mill will provide us with the extra food, I feel. I'm not sure it provides us with economy. But this should be pretty easy to put together. Okay. Regions. Let's take a quick look. I know this first episode is all about planning, so expect for us to talk a lot about this. We have here a market hall. We have some timber around, which will decrease the cost of the area, so I think we might invest early on in this one. Because getting that 25%, I think, in total, 20 or 25% reduction is really good. Pottery. Pottery can be used for commerce. Lead. Lead is industry. But we have sheep here. So this can be all industry. But given that we have a market hall here, I think I'll turn it into a commercial area. Over here with the abbey, I'm not sure. Either we go commerce or we go with more public order if need be. A unique hole, more ships, more timber and iron. Another market hole, more lead. Maybe this area could be industrial. Uh, abbey. And farms. If I want food, I should start fighting in this on this side. So there are three food settlements. There's three more on this side. The saint over here. This is the one with the research, so that can be a useful addition. And kicking this faction out of the game as soon as possible will be great. As, oh, we have Northumbria here. Stratclute is a bit north. Okay. Yeah. 
pretty big factions near us. Let's do a double check on these guys. Ugh, let's hear it. Then I'll decide how long you stay. Okay. Their power is a lot higher than theirs. No. We will do our utmost. Yeah, I should be we using cannot. this army to take these guys on early before they join any other factions. The men are ready to serve. Okay. Let all foes beware. Got it. So this will most likely be a commercial area. Then we will have this area which looks fairly like I could make it fairly industrial, right? Because we have Ofa's Hole, which also reduces some corruption. We will we have Starfisher blacksmith which provides us with a lot of income from industry i guess adding more more industry in the area because we can with the potter because we can with the woodcutter is probably a better idea then we have another village here which at the moment is just a long hole with grain pits but we can get fruit trees and a few other farms. So this will be just a feeding area. And in Gloucester, in Gloucester we have a lot of industry. We remember this from the campaign back with the lead, iron and wood. There are buildings that go very well with this, both commercial and industrial. So we're going to go with industry and churches as much as we can okay we'll decide how we spend money in a bit let's just do this first battle the cool thing about Mirs is are these warriors the sax warriors and then we have some swords two cavalry the general I think he's a beast as well is a melee warrior and I think he's a swordsman. If I'm not mistaken, he's a swordsman. And we've got pretty much the same army, but the advantage is that we do have swords. Let's check them out. Ready for war! Yeah, look at that. Pretty cool looking. And they have swords. So, yeah, we have two swordsmen. We'll have our archers in here. Spears. Spears push against cavalry. And the cavalry has some armor, has some melee skill and melee de damage. That is good. Is there no melee defense on this one? No, apparently not. And 110 speed. I mean, this guy has 100, which means that we will be able to catch them with, with our horses. Okay, let's have the archers. Start shooting upon him. Bring the spears forward. Bring this cavalry to the side. Our cavalry are scout horsemen. They they show with spears. Yeah, let's bring these units around. Yeah, these guys are royal companions. Okay. Yeah, let's retreat our horses as we engage with our spears. Okay, swords have been engaged. Hit hard! Quick march, men! Shift yourself! We're under fire! 
Good. Let's bring you here. Let's bring you around. I think I will take care of these. Of these spears first. Since he doesn't seem like he wants to threaten us too much. Okay, let's retreat through here. Hit hard. Yeah, we're gonna jump in here. I am going to bring these swords. Come on. Courage. Cavalry. I'm gonna put this on them. Perfect. They've gained some courage as they're trying to take on the archers. Let's try to shoot at his general, see what that does. you around this guy is done okay. I will reposition our swords behind his general a few volleys wouldn't be bad Let's bring the swords here. I would like the archers to stop. And I would like the swords to put pressure. Okay, hopefully we're not losing our king. It seems like they're saying that we're losing the battle, right? In melee and losing. Let's try to do a charge in here. Trying to break them. Oh, they have some ranks on us, like they're silver, so I guess that is the main thing. Sure. Let's keep the pressure on them until we we know they're not anymore. Nice. So this is the first battle of the campaign. Nothing to brag about to your mother. Ooh. Okay, what do we want? The money? Sure. A hundred gold. Good for early on. Cap, the lands to our north, whilst not the richest, are of great st strategic interest to us. If we were to conquer them, we'd be much more secure down here in England. Take Mam sister. Already start a war with Northumbria. I mean, you wouldn't be wrong, but that is not an easy garrison to take over. Okay, what race do we have? Infamous attacker. Born commander, handsome, brave, skillful, and a fighter, and he is the first to risk. Giving him one champion will provide us with knight battles, which we would like, and rally level 2. 
His wife is demanding, providing him with 1 influence, plus 2 to zeal, and minus 2 to loyalty, which doesn't matter for our king, but that is good. I want more power over here. The men are ready to serve. Let's see, 200 to do that. I would like... How much food do we have? 55. I would like like two swords. And what else? A cavalry unit. I'm gonna take a weaker cavalry unit instead of this elite one. Another archer. Four units. I think using these four units. Dependable in the fight, aggressive drama queen. Every little thing is a chance for this for needless drama when this man is involved. All diplomatic events have a higher impact than normal, shorter fall off for diplomatic events and treaties. And he despises the English, so he's not gonna like us. And thus we will start battle number two. And battle number two's role is to take over as many of the smaller villages as we can. Before we declare war on Artambra, I feel like that is a pitfall. You declare war on Artambra, which lengthens the territory we need to protect. And once we fight Northumbria, like if Gwynedd declares war because they see an opportunity, then we will have... Uh, East CX declare war because, yeah, we are their opportunity more than West CX, West 6, and West sucks. And finally, you will have to the south, probably there will be certain events. I know there's events of vassalization, we saw them in the last campaigns, and I'm not sure exactly if there's something... Do I declare, do I accept vassalization as Mears or not? Or me, my years, my years? Anyway, you get the idea. Let's see, I don't see the enemy yet. We're gonna work on getting the higher ground. I will need to use the archers in order to take down their long axes. Okay, they're not seen either. Let's hurry it up just a tiny bit. And I am going to use my cavalry to scout. Oh. Drive the horses. Can we see further in here? The best of ten victories to attack first. Kick your steeds. Yeah, I'm gonna run around because I I need to, to scout victory. them out. Kick your steeds. Are they in the forest? Like I don't I would have seen arrows probably already. I mean I can't see Dear. Ah, oh, there they are. Okay. Run away. Wow, that horse. Oh, very unfortunate, but that that horse took a pretty bad arrow. General. Okay. Well, at least we discovered the enemy, they're downhill, they will provide us with an opportunity here to... Fortunately, they will provide us with an opportunity to shoot at his axe, or the two-handed axes, whose scarls maybe they'll hold? 
or long axes? Shall see. Let's see, let's bring you from this side. Yes! Oh! Man, they've moved far. All of them? Did they move all of them? Feels like they have. Not sure what they're trying to do. They're trying to fight to bring themselves in the forest. Wow, I've never seen the AI do such tactics. It's annoying, but it is slightly smarter, right? They had a higher ground and if I cancel the higher ground from them, like they looked at these units and were like, you know what? Long axes do better in the forest. And here we have a woodcutter's hut. Taking a look at, you know, this view makes me want to play Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I feel like we will do that at some point in the future. And there's a huge market in here. I feel like we've reached what we needed to reach. And I'm not too worried about the cavalry dying here. As long as we can scout them out. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Okay. So he has those units there. Oh, we're taking fire and we cannot see them. That is really bad. Yeah, let's try to disrupt them just a bit. Okay, archers, you shoot at the long axemen, please. Okay, let's see. Yeah, long axes. We're gonna try to fight them, but fighting them in the forest is really not the way to do this. Okay. I'm gonna try to work around here. Okay, I'll return back. I wouldn't really want these axes to fight us. But I feel like if we're gonna charge at them, it's going to be okay. Right, we have a slight shield wall in here. Okay, let's retreat our horses once again. Let's put pressure on the long axes. While shooting, maybe shooting at his archers. Okay, so at least the long axes are getting overwhelmed. They didn't manage to get the great charge. No, they Okay, one of the archers. Okay. 
Let's have them here. Let's break these guys from shield wall. I will have the cavalry on the Carol Archer. I think they're Carols. And all of these units. Come on. Perfect. I don't need them to do anything special. I, if they break the archers here, I don't care about anything else. Perfect. The battle is turning in our favor. Making ready. Okay. Get them. Quick charge. Good. Now we'll run away again. As we're breaking the spears. Yeah, at this point we'll leave the cavalry as it is. We're not gonna put any more pressure on them. To succeed. Yeah, it's okay. You've done really well, cavalry. Hoping you survived. And now they've put themselves into a shield wall, but they've turned their backs in the wrong direction. So let's get in here. Yeah, nice. And we're gonna make sure everybody's capped on morale. That's it! Another decisive victory. The very old king, 64 years of age. The time for change has come. Yeah, we're one turn away from taking over another farm. We have a hunting ground, we have lead veins, that is good because this will also provide us with goods to trade. Minus one turns until replenishment for missile units recruitment. Okay. Uh, or we could get more commerce. Hmm. Pretty good all in all for both food and commerce. This area looks slightly better. We await your command. Or food, then rather than commerce, because it has industry, it has industry and it has some food, it has a long haul. So, probably, we're gonna make another food center here. And with you, I am going to give you command as well, just to bring you to level four. Replenishment rates look at that, that is so good. Uh, we are in a border war now. War has reached our borders, the entire wealth of the kingdom should be committed to the military. And we get plus 2 to public order, feared cap increase plus 50%, plus 20% campaign movement range, all of your forces in our territory, and minus 50% construction cost. Huh. And at this point... Yeah, very close to increasing that. Right? Like, we could do this. This is a minus 6, could get a rebellion. Minus 4 here, be slightly unhappy. And minus 1. Okay, I'm not gonna do it this turn. But it's an interesting way to look at it. So, what do I want to expand first? This seems to be my most central region. Right, this will be secondary, I would say. But this is first, so I will make a woodcutter. And over here... 
I think I will work. Yeah, food is not really predominant around this. I, actually, there is some food. So even going with food wouldn't be bad here. 15 to 20. I can't really commit to farms. We're gonna have work for high taxes. Or maybe... Oh, the, here we just have an orchard. Not an option. Maybe the way to go forward is to wait and upgrade these towns in order to make churches pr a priority. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that's pretty much it. We have some generous donation, minus 50% cons construction time for church and Benedictine Abbey, and 75% research rate. That is great, because this campaign focuses around churches. And then we have these, the People's Prince, Allegiance, and Public Order, which once again will help us with taxes, especially in times of need. Loyalty. Seems like we have a pretty good situation with Mears. is a strong faction. We're just going to have to see how we play in such a way that, you know, we, we are definitely threatened on multiple sides. We need to make sure we are strong, that whenever we're being engaged, we're, we'll be able to respond to them. What is this? Discipline. Oh, so the penalty to morale is not that high. Uh, yeah, two axes. Mm, took one too many here, so let's see, do I, so should I merge these? I think I'll merge the spears. And that is going to have to be it for this turn. After we take a look at our family, so this is our brother. We have two governors here, let's see. Our brother is a skilled protector. Okay, we could find him a good wife. We have an heir already. This guy is a governor and he's not bad at it. Except for being harsh. But other than that, seems like he's okay. You? You could be a great governor as well, and you are. You are a governor. Good as well. And finally, you. Still a governor. And is his good too. You are in Staffordshire. A governor. And I am not sure that that's where I want you. Yeah, because you're a merchant. Let's see. You are a farmer. Are there more farms here? No. There will be more farms in certain areas. But I guess Harold and Godwin should exchange places. Let's see. Harold. There we go. And Godwin will come here. This should make the whole situation better because he's a merchant. And I'm hoping that this guy will do a good job here though. Maybe there are not so many sources of food. We'll spread them around. And with that in mind, I am going to end the turn.
Okay, it seems like they want to threaten us. We have two armies stepping in. My reputation grows. Yeah, so we have two tre trespassers here. By no means, not an option. No. Not too sure what their intention is. To glory we must. But I am going to occupy this settlement. We have an extra farm, which means that I could recruit a few more troops. If I had anything of good quality. But other than bringing a horseman for a pretty good chunk of money, there's Impossible. nothing too special to do right now. All forces in good order. Well, this is all the time that we we have for today. I'm gonna put a cut in the 45 minutes just so I can start work. And I'll come back later in the day to to work on the final video. As I said, trying to get it towards the end of the week to post it. The analysis of the last campaign with the Viking. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Now as always, if you like what I do, let me know, do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if uh, you want to keep in touch, and yeah, for any kind of ideas or thoughts or, uh, you know, ideas about other games that you would like to see on the channel, send them to me via email or send them via the comments below. There are two games on my list right now. Actually, I could say there are three ideas on my list right now. Uh, one is to play Anno 1800. The second one is to play as on the weekend as a challenge. Uh, we will play as Northumbra, I think it is, in uh, Crusader Kings 3. There is a challenge, and I think it's Northumbra that starts at war with two major Viking factions. And yeah, you can get wiped out very early on. So I feel like that that was a challenge that was thrown at me and I would like to do that as well. And there was this game, oh, the first one being the War Band. Oh, let me double check it. What was his name? Not, it comes to mind, Command and Conquer, no, Mountain Blade, that's the one. So I also have Mountain Blade on my list, that has been through a lot of work, and I am going to be bringing that up somewhere, I'm not sure this month, but as soon as I can fit it in. So with that in mind, let me know what other ideas you, you might have or you might want to see. Because I'll take them into consideration and try to uh, try to bring more of the games that you like as well. Until tomorrow, thank you very much for supporting the Two-Headed Wolf Gaming channel and for sticking around with me. And I wish you all to have a wonderful day.